and welcome back to the most amazing channel on the internet. I'm your host Rebecca Felgate and today we're back discussing that trending word, aren't we? Sociopath. Today we are talking the top 10 scary encounters with a sociopath. Now we're not saying that all sociopaths are evil, just that they are predisposed to some behaviour that other people may find worrying. Stay tuned until the end of the video to get the full story. Also if you want to leave a comment about sociopaths, what you think of this whole thing, then please do so. Also if you like our content, please do leave a thumbs up and share this video with a friend. Ok, scary encounters. Coming in at number 10 we have the husband. In 2013, the Daily Mail ran a terrifying story about a woman named Mel who came to realise that she had married a sociopath. Sometimes the scariest thing is finding out the person you love isn't who you thought they were. In the article Mel saw a photo from hers and Cameron's wedding day and said, On this day, the happiest day of my life, I had unwittingly given my heart to a sociopath who was later going to strip me of my dignity, strength and money. She said at first they had a whirlwind romance but after a couple of years his veneer started to crack and he became mechanical. She discovered the words of love he had said to her were taken from movies and when she confronted him about his feelings, he exploded with anger. He then manipulated her by blaming her for his anger and later managed to isolate her from her friends. It took discovering that he was cheating twice for Mel to leave and she said when Cameron found out, he was cold, unfeeling and they never spoke again. Coming into number 9 we have the father. There is a very long editorial piece in Elle magazine written in 2016 about a young woman who had to tend to her dying father who abused her growing up. It's really sad and heartbreaking, it's a really really sad read and it highlights the effect a sociopath can have on those around them. So Christina's father met her mother at church and very quickly became the man he thought she needed, convincing her family and the church obliging her to say yes. Now Christina said that her father always had a way of winning people over. When Christina's parents were married, her father insisted they move over 2,000 miles away from their home, effectively isolating her mother. This was when he began physically abusing using her. She was awarded a divorce after a court psychologist deemed him a sociopath with the inability to form long term relationships. Awarded custody for two weekends a year, the man assaulted Christina and her sister on a handful of occasions. As they grew up, they distanced themselves from him. Unfortunately though, he still wrote letters to tell the girls that their failing relationship was all their fault. In the end, Christina was her father's next of kin and had to tell doctors to turn off his life as support machine when he was dying. She was determined that in death, he wouldn't haunt her anymore. Coming into number 8 we have the son. So what do you do if your child is a sociopath? This must be one of the scariest realisations of them all. In the reddit question thread, a parent said that after years of living with their father, their child came to live with them and they found them to be strange and cold. At just 11 years old, his mother said that he would compulsively lie. He would also beat other kids and then swear blind that he didn't do it. He'd get angry and harm adults and then calm down and coldly tell them that he didn't want them to be alive, he wanted them to die. His mother put the child in therapy where he is receiving help, but he told her that she is the reason he acts the way he does. She ended the post by saying, will I be surprised if he turns out to be a serial killer? No, not one bit. My heart is breaking daily, something is wrong with my child and I don't know if it can be fixed. How sad. Some of the comments do point out that actually the kid sounds like he has reactive detachment disorder rather than sociopathy. To be honest I suppose it's quite hard to tell until a kid grows. Up. Coming into number 7 we have the brother. In an ask reddit thread, a redditor posted a question asking if anyone knew a true sociopath and of course the answers came pouring in. 1 in 25 people are sociopaths so you know, they're out there. Sadly one person answered that they believed their older brother actually fit the bill of sociopath. They said he could be the most charming, friendly, affable and intelligent person until you stop being of any use to him. The moment he wasn't able to manipulate you, take advantage of or use you, he'd cut you out of his life and move on, if you were lucky. If you weren't lucky, he'd become incredibly abusive verbally, physically and he would play with your emotions to see what you would do. The redditor said that he killed strays when he was younger and spent time in juvie. They said that when he got out, he beat them. Eventually the brother joined the military and spawned seven children. When he finished his military tours, he gained full custody of the three children and their siblings even suspect that he abused them. They said that they tried to get social service involved, but as of yet they've done nothing. He's just out there, living off his military pension. Coming into number 6 we have the cellmate. Tracy Brown was in prison with Jodie Arias, a woman who brutally killed her ex-boyfriend. Jodie was her cellmate until she was sentenced to life, after which point she was transferred. Now Tracy said that she received 6 tattoos by the killer and that her biggest mistake 
mistake that she ever made was letting her tattoo her name on her. She had this to say about Jodie. Sociopath. Tracy said that the killer used pencil lead, mascara and a needle to tattoo cellmates and that she flirted with correctional officers, manipulating them into letting her keep the contraband. Tracy said that in her time spent with Jodie, she would mutter to herself and said that she intended actually to kill her ex-boyfriend's new girlfriend rather than him. These were Tracy's final words about Jodie. She wants and when she's done with you, she will throw you away. Coming into number 5, we have The Surgeon. In 2017, a Texas surgeon, Christopher Dunch, was dubbed a sociopath by world media as he was sent to jail for purposefully botching surgeries. The neurosurgeon had previously told an ex-girlfriend he thought he would become a cold-blooded killer before he was found guilty of purposefully maiming patients. His former colleagues declared him a sociopath and a jury contended that actually, he was intentionally, knowingly and recklessly harming up to 15 of his patients. For example, he left a sponge inside one person and cut another's major vein. Mr. Dutch has claimed that the allegations were false and that the jury were wrong. Lying, of course, is a trait of a sociopath. Coming into number four, we have it was me. Imagine expecting to have a scary encounter with a sociopath and then realizing that that sociopath is you. James Fallon is a neuroscientist who, as part of a research project studying the brains of psychopaths, realized that he was one. He had scans of a whole bunch of brains from healthy people as well to aid his research. Now he came across what he thought to be a textbook psychopathic brain. He identified low frontal lobe activity and low temporal lobe activity. Now these are linked with morality, empathy and self control. He then realized the scan that he was looking at was of his own brain. He had the mental makings of a psychopath. Although he knew he was always attracted to power and manipulation, he had no idea that he was displaying the physical attributes of a psycho. He then realized he came from a line of seven alleged murderers. Now Fallon considered himself to be stable. He said, while I'm aggressive, my aggression is sublimated. I'd rather beat someone in an argument than beat them up. He thinks that he could have developed into becoming the type of sociopath that harmed people, but luckily, he was loved while he was growing up. He also said since finding out that he had a psychotic brain, he was trying to change his ways. He said, I've been more consciously trying to do things that are considered to be the right thing to do. He continued by saying he was thinking more about other people's feelings. He then said though, at the same time, I'm not doing this because I'm suddenly nice, I'm doing it because of pride, because I want to show everyone and myself that I can pull it off. Jesus. Coming into number 3, we have the serial killer ex-boyfriend. So you're dating a psychopath, that's already pretty hard to deal with, but then you find out that actually he's a serial killer and he's been murdering women just like you. Well that is, to be honest, off the charts. Infamous serial killer Ted Bundy started dating Stephanie Brooks, real name Diane Edwards, in 1967. They both attended the University of Washington. Stephanie broke it off with Ted for better prospects, but they later rekindled in 1973. When speaking about her ex, Stephanie said that she was attracted by his ability to talk and said that he wrote fantastic letters. It seemed that the reconnection was just a game for Bundy who simply wanted to prove that he could win. He was annoyed that she had been the one to end it and he just wanted to actually reignite it so he could end it himself. The pair became engaged but one day in 1974 he broke off all contact suddenly. When she called him to try and reconcile, he answered coldly and then hung up. He later said in court that he just wanted to prove that he could marry her. While Bundy's main killing spree came after, Stephanie, he did kidnap and was rumoured to murder women before he met her. Coming into number 2, we have the cult leader. Jim Jones was one of the scariest and most horrifying sociopaths of all time and his actions led to the deaths of nearly 1,000 people. Jim Jones was responsible for the Jonestown Massacre, a religious mass suicide in which he convinced his flock to end their lives. Wind back several years and Jim Jones established the People's Temple in the 1950s, believing heavily in himself and his power to manipulate people. On the surface, Jim seemed like a very charismatic and charming guy. He was a political climber and he managed to become director of Human Rights Commission in Indianapolis. While Jim certainly had some redeeming points when it came to his view on ending racial segregation, unfortunately it seemed his ideology was in place only to gain him power. Eventually moving his cult from California to Guyana, he tightened his control over the members and it seemed he wouldn't let them leave. When it seemed the United States was going to intervene and his powers would be taken away, Jim Jones managed to convince his people to drink cyanide laced Kool Aid. 918 people died because Jim Jones would rather they died than he loses power. 
Finally, coming into number one, we have a lady that said, Do you know what? I am a sociopath. Okay, so Shane apologised for making his Jake Paul series seem like a horror series, and I thought that maybe we could clear up some of the questions and myths surrounding sociopathy by hearing it from someone who actually has it. YouTuber Face System, real name Iris, is a sociopath. She has an antisocial behavioural disorder, and hearing from someone with this does hammer home that it is a mental illness, and that for some people it really is very real. Now, she outlines the symptoms, which by now you will already know. The scariest part for us to hear about is the chronic boredom, the impulsivity, and the reckless disregard for safety. This is what she had to say. I would not care if I died. She also discusses cognitive empathy, saying she understands emotion, but she simply doesn't care. Although, she explains that there are some people she can feel some kind of empathy and remorse for. These are a couple of close friends and her fiance, who she later reveals also has ASPD. She says she cares about these people, and if anyone hurt them, well then this would happen. Like, if someone did anything to her, that person should run and hide. She says she doesn't actually lie to these people closest to her because they understand her, so she has no need to. I am not going to lie or manipulate you unless you give me a damn good reason to do it. Importantly, she says not all people who are diagnosed sociopaths are monsters and serial killers. She does say that some people with ASPD will hurt you, but they're mainly people who are unaware of the fact that they have a disorder. She said that you should be very afraid of the people who know they have it, but avoid treatment. Worrying as this may sound, it's also good to know that there are people suffering with the disorder that can be helped. So guys, that was the top 10 scary encounters with a sociopath. What do you think to this? Do we need to discuss this any further, or do you feel like you know what you've got to good grasp of the mental illness now. Do let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. For now, if you like this kind of content, make sure you leave a good thumbs up, share this video with a friend, and stay subscribed for more most amazing lists. Bye!